going to my love and learn really, really quick. And I want to talk about part two of hypnotherapy. Okay. Hypnosis and hypnotherapy. Now, the reason why I'm talking about this, this last two weeks is because I'm excited about it, right? Super excited about it. Got my training in it, um, got my certification in it, and I'm really working on it. And hypnotherapy is the key. It's what I will be using in addition to my intuition and addition to my spirit team of my angels and guides is what is going to create the offer that I'm working on that I've told you about, which are these soulful journeys. And these soulful journeys are going to be one of two things. You can either, with me guiding you, you can either go into a past life and do a past life regression safely, easily. Um, go into a past life regression and figure out what you were in the past life, who you were, were where you lived, what kind of things were going on, um, what kind of job you did, you know, whether you were male or female or all of that kind of stuff. And more importantly, I mean, that's entertainment and I love it. And you've heard me say that. But, um, and that entertainment is really what's important is because I will guide you during the journeys to really, um, uh, I'll guide you during the journeys to really get the learnings. Like what were the lessons, the learnings in that past life that affects your life today? And what is it that you need to learn from that life to come into this life that will help you? So, okay, you guys, I'm getting that note again that says, sorry, we're having trouble playing this video. I would love, I'm going to hit the refresh button and I'm going to hope that I'm still live. And I'm um, going to go back to the comments. So I'm going to hope, here we go again. I'm going to hope that I'm still here, you guys. So please let me know. Hitomi, let me know if it's still going. Okay. I really need to hear from you. Hey, Isabella, happy President's Day. I know you're home. So um, my Bella is too. Um, anyway. Okay. All good. Great. Okay, so that's the hypnotherapy. And then the other part of it is you can go in, uh, same process, different journey, soulful journey. You will be able to go in and reconnect to a crossed over loved one if you want. And the reason why it's all important is because I'm using hypnosis to do it and hypnotherapy. So I want you to know what I'm doing, okay? And I want to give you a really cool kind of brief history about hypnosis. And I know, Isabella, you're in here right now and you're not having school today and it's a day off. So you may not find this interesting or fun in a history lesson, but it's kind of cool. You might want to, you'll be able to tell your friends about it, okay? Okay, I wrote some stuff down. And this comes from my training manual that I had that I did last uh, year when I was doing the training from Empowerment Inc. and Empowerment Partnership. So just want to source where this information is coming from, and it's part of my training, okay? Um, the other thing I want to tell you really quick about hypnosis and going back to the soulful journeys is one of the most famous psychics that we've had in the 21st century, Sylvia Brown. I think she wrote 11, 15 books. I don't know. I don't know how many books she wrote. She was uh, hooked up with Hay House way back when, when Louis Hay, Louise Hay started Hay House. Sylvia Brown was a trained hypnotherapist. She got into it and she was able to drop people into trance immediately. And she was able to take them on past life regressions. And it's because of her training in hypnotherapy that allowed her to be such a great guide on journeys. So that is, uh, that is who I'm modeling. That is actually one of the reasons why I really wanted to learn this because when I found that out, that it goes and it dovetails so well with intuition, I was just like, yeah, this is exciting. This is exciting. Okay. Okay. So here's what I want to tell you about hypnosis and hypnotherapy. It has been around forever, forever, okay? This is just like Eastern medicine that has been around forever, Reiki, shamanism, you know, all of the indigenous cultures have some kind of spirituality, mysticism in with their lives and um, modalities for healing. Uh, you know, throughout, throughout humankind and human history, there has always been healers and there's always been various healing modalities. So hypnosis is actually first talked about way back 2000 BC in the Egyptians and in India, they first talked about hypnosis and hypnotherapy. 
And it would have become, hypnotherapy really would have become way more popular and hypnosis really would have become a standard medical therapy today if there weren't two different times in history that kind of quashed it and put it down. And I think this is really, really fascinating, okay? So I'm looking in here. So basically it's traced back 2000 BC, India and Egypt. It was widespread in Europe by 1042, right, AD. So, you know, right early in Egypt is when it was. And then it was pretty widespread. And then here's something really interesting. So the first part where hypnotherapy was about ready to take off as a healing modality began with this guy named Valentine Great White. And this was in the 1600s. Now, he started doing hands-on healing, right? Now, hands-on healing is mentioned in the Bible, right? We're going back, but I'm not talking about that so much, but that's, you know, referred to Jesus Christ and what they have. So, but this guy, Valentine Braitwife, started doing hands-on healing in the 1600s. And what happened is word spread that his hands-on healings were pretty great and that people were actually healing from it. And, um, and, and one of the things that happened is the, the Catholic Church um, did not really care for the information very much that, you know, that he was able to do hands-on healing and he was really getting out the message that people could heal their self through their own minds and their own thoughts because the Catholic church was, well, if people can heal themselves, what are we going to do? How is this going to affect us? Because we really need people to believe and to know that all healing comes from God. So, um, so it was an interesting kind of political thing that was going on at the time regarding can we heal themselves or do we need a higher power to heal us? And, and that's the first time that hypnotherapy actually started to get discredited, um, actively discredited was with um, Valentine Great Wife in the 1600s. And then, and so it kind of went underground like alchemy for about 150 years. Uh, when the church started putting attention on it, everybody who wanted to be a healer or be involved in the idea of alchemy and, um, you know, hands-on healing or any kind of alternative idea of the time went a little bit underground and it went underground for about 150 years. So pretty interesting that it did that. And then in 1750, a guy named Frank Mesner uh, created mesmerism, and he brought back again into the limelight of the power of belief that we as human beings can heal ourselves with our thoughts, you know? So he basically was guiding people in with this mesmerized mesmerism, which we now know is mesmerized, right? We were mesmerized. So he started people bringing people into trance to help them heal with their ailments. Um, uh, so that was pretty cool. Um, in 1943, G.A. Estabrook started the pocket watch. You guys remember that you are getting very sleepy, sleepy. So that's the guy with the pocket watch. So this kind of kept going. Um, and then there's a guy named Dan Elman, which is the responsibility for change is really on the human being, right? So it, it took it out of the hands from the past where the healer, right, the mesmerizer and the, all of the stuff took it out from the person doing the healing. And, you know, so it took it out from the practitioner and he really put it back into the first time that you were a guide, that it's the person doing the healing, but it's the guiding. So let me go back to Valentine Bray with Frank Mesner, those kind of things. They really believed that they had the special gifts to do this. And so it was really them as the healer. But, you know, G.A. Bricks brought out the pocket watch and, and I'm sorry, David Elman brought it out that really it is, um, it is us. It is the person being hypnotized in hypnotherapy that is responsible for the change in their life, that is the responsible for the healing and that his skills as a very skilled hypnotist, hypnotherapist could actually guide to the healing. OK, so um, and then it was kind of interesting because the other thing that happened. So I said the second time in history. So the other thing that happened in history is during hypnotism, hypnotism was starting and hypnotherapy was starting to go into the medical community. And again, that people can heal themselves. 
And one of the things that happened during Freud's time in psychotherapy and Jung and Adler and those kind of things that were going on the cognitive behavioral side of things, they got a little threatened, excuse me, they got threatened by the people who were in the behavioral psychology side that were separating. And so they were doing traditional therapy. Jung was doing traditional therapy. And they were a little threatened by the fact that you can do hypnosis and with post-hypnotic suggestions, you could actually cause healing through instead of lay on the psychiatrist couch for hours and hours and hours and hours of traditional therapy. So they were threatened by that. So they actually started to discredit hypnotherapy at that time as well. So the the, um, the cognitive psychology people kind of went over and got out and discredited. So the reason why I just wanted to tell you that is it's just really interesting. I find it fascinating to find out a little bit about the history of these things because in today's world, things are considered woo-woo, right? I mean, I was always, when I would talk about metaphysics, when I would talk about a lot of this stuff years ago when I was first doing it, People thought it was woo-woo and they were like, oh, that's a little bit too woo for me, you know, and I just got put into the woo-woo um, category and it's fine. I don't mind being woo-woo, but, you know, but I don't really like being discredited for my ideas and my thoughts as well. So I think for me, I resonated with the fact that at different times in history, be it the church or be it other, you know, professionals that felt threatened that when fear comes up, anytime there's fear that comes up that's when new thought and new ideas get discredited. That's when somebody who is different and doing something different can possibly be frightening and can possibly be scary to the masses. And so, you know, then there's people that get together to discredit and try to stop that from going forward, right? And I just find it really, really interesting because I believe that neuroscience and and you know psychology and 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 epigenetics and all of this functional medicine that there is technology and science around that is starting to verify what was woo right and really what's hilarious to me is that woo really is woo in this particular century but if you go back to eastern thought and you go back to eastern medicine and pranic healing and you know reiki and japanese and asian and chinese medicine these things are ancient they are absolutely ancient and they were the theories and the modalities of the time and nobody thought that science had to prove them we just went to a healer herbs and the herbs made you feel better you know you went to you know you who would put their hands on you and you felt better and there wasn't all that questioning so um so we have a rich history we have a rich history of discrediting woo and um and that's okay you know it's like anytime anything gets discredited well those of us who really really believe in it have to just keep moving forward so um so in terms of hypnotherapy I'm just moving forward and I'm going to take people into uh, soulful journeys into past lives and also having a chance to reconnecting with loved ones. And I know what I'm doing. I have training for it. I have intuition for it and I find it just exciting. So I am excited on my new frontier and my new journey I'm starting. And I hope that you guys are excited for me. So, okay. Um, the only other thing I want to tell you about hypnosis, you know, that went a little longer than I thought. The only other thing I want to tell you about hypnosis is that a light trance. So when you were to, if you were to go on these journeys with me, right. And, and we were to do this together and I were to guide you, I would guide you into a light trance or a medium trance and a trance state is just relaxation. Our brain waves, which I talked about last week, we are constantly in our brain waves. We are going from the beta state down into an alpha state and a theta state and it's brain waves. So hypnosis is just accessing those deeper brain wave states is what they are. It is trying to loosen up 
the um, cognitive, the, the critical faculty. So the critical fact, faculty is a, a membrane, for lack of a better word, between your unconscious mind and your conscious mind. And so it's in our unconscious mind where imagination is, play is, creativity is, artistry is, you know, uh, music, dance, all of those kind of things lie in our unconscious mind. And hypnotherapy is what takes that critical faculty, softens that, and allows us to go into a deeper state of relaxation so we can access our unconscious mind and we can access those memories of a deep trance and all of that stuff. So um, so when you're, you know, if you're doing this journey with me, you're going to be aware of everything. You're going to be able to hear everything that you hear. You know, you're going to feel everything you feel. You never lose control. You know, you will never lose control of yourself. Like I was telling people that, you know, that, that you know, on the, the stage shows, the hypnotist stage shows, and they get people to walk like a duck or they get them to do things. They are only able to do that because that person's unconscious mind in some level believes that it's safe and it's okay to do it. And whatever they're asking is not going against their deep values and their deep beliefs. So there is no way a hypnotherapist or a hypnotist can ever make you do anything that goes against your values because our unconscious mind is a highly moral being and we will not ever go against our deep rooted values. Okay. So I think that's important to know. Um, and just know that you are always in control um, and that you only accept the, consist the, the suggestions that are consistent with your beliefs. So post-hypnotic su suggestions, you know, subliminal messages, you know, for weight loss or motivation or those kind of things. Um, I've been starting to listen to sub subliminal messages before I go to sleep. And it's really kind of cool. So I will drift off allowing these really positive affirmations and these positive subliminal messages to go into my unconscious mind. So when I wake up in the morning, I'm feeling much more refreshed or happier or motivated, um, all of those kind of things. So it's pretty cool. Okay. <sighs> Let me see. I know that's a quick completion, but I do feel like I need to move on from the love and learn, and I try not to bore you with too much information, okay? Okay, let me read the questions. Um, does hypnosis work well as well online? Yes, hypnosis can work as well online. Um, it's really about the voice, and it's about making sure that the client, so Carolyn, if you were the client, you would need to be in a nice, relaxed state. So, you know, sitting up straight in your chair is not going to be as conducive as if you were laying on a couch or sitting in a comfy chair, but my voice works just as well with hypnosis. I actually was doing two sessions this weekend and um, I was doing post-hypnotic suggestions. We were doing it because we were putting it in her timeline after a breakthrough session that we did and we were putting all of her goals and her dreams into her future timeline. And I started doing her affirmations and she fell asleep on me. And she woke up, I woke her up at the end of it. I'm like, are you there? And she, she's just like, oh my gosh, I fell asleep. Did I get everything I needed? And I'm like, absolutely. It was perfect because her conscious mind just relaxed. And this was over Zoom, Carolyn. We were doing it. We were doing an online session. We did an online breakthrough with her in St. Louis, me in Arizona. And, you know, and I was like, it's perfectly fine. You fell asleep. You just went into a very deep trance. My voice took you into that. And all of those affirmations and post-hypnotic suggestions are now implanted in your unconscious mind. Okay. So great question. Thank you so much for that question. And Amy Davis says, thanks for sharing this history with everyone. I hope you find it interesting, Amy. I only share things on Magic Mondays that I find interesting. And because this is so interesting to me, I really wanted to share it. 